Hello, this is Eric Wamsley, Systems Engineer with Nutanix. This is my second video showing how we set up a vSphere 6.7 environment running with Nutanix. The first video was where we foundationed A3460 using AOS 5.9 and ESXi 6.7. This video is a direct follow-up to the previous one where now we're going to actually configure vCenter 6.7 where we're going to set up the data center, the vSphere cluster, add our hosts, and set all the relevant host and cluster settings that are required to properly run a Nutanix environment when the hypervisor is ESXi. The first thing we'll want to do is look at our vCenter registrations. You'll go to the gear icon on the top right, and then go to vCenter registration. This will show you that currently there are no vCenter registrations, nor is there a vCenter server found. This is important because when you do actions inside of the Prism interface, it will allow Nutanix to actually send commands to vCenter, uh, doing things like presenting storage, creating VMs, getting information about the environment. To get a vCenter server to show up in the vCenter registration so that we can actually register it, you need to first add your hosts to the vCenter server. So we'll go ahead and log into our vCenter server and do that first. Over on our freshly created vCenter 6.7 environment, we'll right click on the vCenter server and hit new data center. Remember a data center is a physical location. I'm actually running this out of my lab, so I will name this appropriately, but make sure you name yours as a descriptive and obvious name. And then go ahead and hit the OK button. Once the data center is created, we'll right click on that and do add host. We are adding the host before we create a cluster, just because this is a fresh environment. I wanna go ahead and add them in. So you right click, do add host, put the IP or name of the host that you wanna add. For the username, it is root, and the password is default Nutanix for you, although I would recommend changing that. Go ahead and accept the SSH fingerprint. Host summary looks good. We did just image these. Assign your license, or in my case, I'm going to use an eval license. Make sure lockdown mode is disabled. We do need it to be disabled to configure some of these settings. VM location for right now is just going to be the data center. We'll change that later. And then review and hit finish. Your next steps would be to go ahead and add all of your remaining hosts. I do have four total, so I'll go ahead and add those three and you'll see those pop up real quick. I'm not gonna make you watch me go through the wizard three more times. We will next hop back over to Prism and do the vCenter registration. You can actually see that it's already automatically discovered the vCenter server now that we've added our host to that vCenter server. Click the register button and type in your administrative username and password for the vCenter server. This is an existing administrative account. After you've done that, it takes a couple seconds and you actually see that it is showing as registered and then we're done with the registration process. And now we'll hop back over to our vCenter server and create our cluster. Nutanix does provide documentation on the process to create clusters and how to configure the hosts. I'm actually going to follow that along very closely because I want to make sure I don't miss anything and just so you can make sure you can follow along as well. Back over in your vCenter server, right click on the data center and select new cluster. The new cluster wizard opens up where you want to enable DRS, enable HA, uh, because both of them are required for a good performing cluster and availability. And go ahead and name your cluster. Then we'll want to go down to EVC mode and actually enable it for whichever Intel processors you are running. Make sure this is the lowest common denominator. If you're running G6s, this is going to be Skylakes. For DRS, there's no additional options. For vSphere HA, you want to make sure admission control is enabled. And before we close this out, I do want to pause a second in case you've noticed that I have deviated a little bit from the Nutanix documentation. In my environment, because I'm running a lab, this is 100% greenfield, so my vCenter server is actually running on my Nutanix cluster. Typically, you would just go ahead and stop your Nutanix cluster if it is new, but it's running on a vCenter server that's running somewhere else. That way you can enable EVC and add all your hosts. 
because remember the Nutanix Acropolis software runs as a virtual machine on every single host and VMware does not allow you to enable or edit EVC features when there is a virtual machine powered on on your hosts or in a cluster. So what we're about to do is we're going to have to go through and manually power down individual CVMs, add them to the cluster, turn the CVM on, allow the cluster to heal itself after a minute or so, and then go back and do the same thing through the other nodes. If you had an existing vCenter server that is outside of your cluster, all you have to do is actually stop the cluster using the cluster stop command inside of one of the CVMs, then shut off the CVMs themselves, add all the hosts to the cluster inside of vCenter, turn the CVMs back on, log into a CVM and do cluster start. And this is all just because of EVC limitations and requirements inside of VMware. So again, to recap, if your vCenter server is living on this Nutanix cluster, you will have to shut down your virtual machines to enable EVC and add them to the cluster. So you would actually not check HA. You would go ahead and leave EVC enabled. So that way when you bring the host in there, EVC will be configured correctly. But when we, since we're only gonna be adding a single host at a time, HA won't let you turn on VMs because you won't, you'll be violating the HA constraints. If your vCenter server is outside your Nutanix cluster, you can do what is shown on the screen. Go ahead and enable DRS and HA. We are gonna make some changes to them in the future, but what you see on the screen should be good if your vCenter server lives outside of the Nutanix cluster that you're currently building. And then go ahead and hit OK. And then we're going to go through the process of adding a host. First, we need to shut down the CVM for our first host. So to do that, you open up either PuTTY or a terminal session and SSH using the username Nutanix to the controller virtual machine. Log in with the password. And then before you do anything else, I'm pretty cautious. So go over to Prism on the home screen and make sure the data resiliency status says it's okay and that it's not currently rebuilding anything like shown here. And then hop back to your terminal, type CVM underscore shutdown dash capital P space now and press enter. And it'll gracefully shut down the controller VM and then hop back into vCenter, select your host, expand it out, click on the controller VM and watch it and make sure it actually powers off so that we can add it to the cluster. It'll take a couple seconds. Okay, now it's showing that it's powered off. So we can drag the host into the cluster. So just drag it and drop it on the cluster. It'll ask you how you want to create resource pools. Say that you want to put all of the vir host virtual machine and resources into the cluster and make it available. And then go ahead and wait a second and let VMware do its magic. And then once it's successfully added the host, right click on that CVM and hit power on. And then go over to Prism. And you see where the data resiliency status states critical. That's because that CVM was off and it's rebuilding. Wait for it to actually display OK. And then do the same steps for your remaining hosts. After you get all of your hosts and CVMs both powered on and added to your cluster, we want to go to the next step of configuring all your actual hosts. Going over to the Nutanix document, we'll kind of scroll down and we're on steps 10 and 11 where we need to configure the TCP IP settings. Looks like we need to set the host name, DNS servers, and anything else in the networking stack that needs to be configured. Back over in vCenter to get to that screen, you select your host, go to configure, and then once that loads on the left side, you'll select TCP IP configuration underneath the networking dropdown. Select the default TCP IP stack and hit the edit icon. And in the new window, you'll fill out all the information such as host, host name, domain, 
DNS servers, search domains, and anything else you might need to add. And then hit the OK button. And of course, make sure to iterate through all of your hosts and do the same exact thing. Obviously, make sure your host name and IP addresses are unique. You don't want duplicates there. According to the documentation, step number 12 is to configure NTP servers. Both VMware and Nutanix rely heavily on time, so it's a good idea to have all your hosts synchronized together. To do that, select your hosts, go to configure, and then scroll down to system and select time configuration. On the top right, hit the edit button. And in the time configuration wizard, go ahead and select the use network time protocol, which means you want to enable the NTP client and then add your NTP servers. I'm going to use the public pool uh, NTP servers. Uh, if you do have internal ones, make sure you add them here. Would also recommend having at least two NTP servers configured, just in case one is down for maintenance or issue. Make sure you check the box to start and stop the NTP service with the host, and to also start the NTP service as well. Then go ahead and do that same step for all of your remaining hosts. Then let's pop over to the documentation again. And now it looks like we're on step 13. Lucky number 13 is to look at the storage and make sure that all of the NFS data stores are mounted on all your hosts. Going back to vCenter, we wanna change our view to the data stores view. And it'll show us both local and network-based storage. You wanna click the default container let it load, go to hosts, and let it load. And then we can see all four of my hosts are mounted. Make sure all of your hosts are mounted as well, regardless of what the number is. And then we're going to configure some cluster settings. So we need to make sure HA and DRS are enabled. To do that, go back to vCenter, change your view to hosts and clusters, select your cluster, let it load, and then go to the Configure tab. You'll see in my environment, DRS and HA are both turned off, so we're going to enable them. Select HA, hit the Edit button. We're going to tick the box for enabling HA, and then you want to make sure that host response for isolation is configured to power off and restart VMs. Then go ahead and hit the OK button. And then vSphere will go ahead and configure the vCenter cluster for HA. It will take a minute or two, so allow that to complete. And then we'll move on to the next thing, which is DRS. Select vSphere DRS, then on the top right, click the Edit button and the new window tick the box for vSphere DRS to turn it on and hit OK so that DRS gets configured for the cluster. Then go down to VM overrides, click add, and select all of the controller virtual machines. If there are any other VMs in the environment, don't select those. This is just CVM settings. So check those boxes and hit next. And then we're going to override the DRS automation level to disabled. And scroll down to VM Restart Priority, do Override, and do Disabled. And then scroll down some more to VM Monitoring. We're going to override that as well and make sure that is also disabled. We don't want DRS to do any changes at all or migrations to the CVMs. And then hit the Finish button. We have a couple more things we want to do to HA. So let's go back to vSphere Availability. Select the edit button. And we're going to be changing the data store heartbeats. So go to heartbeat data stores, select the middle option, which is use data stores only from the selected list. And then check the bottom box for your data store. Then go back to the Nutanix documentation and copy the advanced setting there to allow a single data store to be a heartbeat data store and set that value to true. Please make sure to notice capitalization and there's no extra spaces. 
I would also recommend going back to Heartbeat Data Stores tab and double checking to make sure use only from the specified list is selected. Then hit the OK button. And we have one last setting in HA we need to configure, and that is going to be the admission control reservations. So that way we don't have too many resources in a cluster and not be able to withstand a node failure. On the top right, go to edit again, select admission control, and then let's go back to the guide to see what settings we need to configure. I have a four node cluster and we actually have a handy dandy chart in the vCenter configuration guide that Nutanix provides. So we'll look up the number of hosts you have. I have four, if you have more or less, make sure you get the numbers there and look at what availability level you want. With N plus one and four hosts, I want 25%. So in the middle, we'll want to override the calculated failover capacity and make sure it's set to 25% CPU and memory and then go ahead and hit the OK button. The next part is a fun VMware feature that's been around for probably a decade now, is anytime you change HA settings like this, you need to go and actually disable HA. Let the cluster remove HA, which will take a moment, and then go back to the settings and enable HA again, so that it will apply those settings and hit the OK button. You're more than welcome to go and double check the settings we put in earlier are there, but they should. Again, hit OK, and it'll reconfigure the cluster, which again will take about a minute or so. And we're in the home stretch here. The next part is going to be disabling storage IO control on a Nutanix container. Remember, a storage container in the Nutanix world is your VMware data store. Inside of vCenter, go to your data stores view, select your storage container, Go to configure and then on the bottom right under general go to data store capabilities hit edit and in the new window we want to make sure disable storage io control and statistics collection is disabled so select that and hit ok and those are all the settings that are required the good thing is these are all settings that you would normally configure when you have a brand new vCenter environment, right? You would enable DRS and HA, you would configure EVC. The only thing that's maybe outside the norm for most administrators would be configuring the um, HA policies for CVM overrides, so that way the CVMs don't actually uh, fail over to other hosts, and you also don't want DRS to obviously move CVMs since they are tied to the host that they run on. The other thing is, since the CVMs are running, when you enable EVC, VMware does have that limitation where you cannot change EVC settings when a virtual machine is powered on. So there is kind of that workaround that I showed earlier in the video. But again, if you do not have vCenter actually running in your Nutanix cluster, you can actually just stop the Nutanix cluster, power off all the CVMs, move the hosts into the cluster, and then power them all back on, and you'll be good to go. Recommended next steps would be to perform any BIOS or firmware upgrades, any Acropolis updates or vSphere ESXi upgrades that are available. Then of course you would just move your workloads over, whether you're doing live migrations using vCenter's shared nothing migration option, or you're doing imports, or even creating fresh new virtual machines. All these options are available to you. Thank you for your time. I hope you have a great day.